Happy Friday, webheads! Welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. And fans, yes, you're back with me, Mike Spider Slayer. Getting ready to do a video that I've been planning all year to do. And guys, I am going to be showing off my... CGC slabs that I have collected for the entire year. Now, I'm not a huge collector of slabs. I grab a few whenever I can. And this is the stack that I wound up getting for the entire year. So I'm excited to share with you all of them that I picked up for the whole year. And uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be buying anymore because you're probably thinking, well, the year's not over yet, but I couldn't wait to do this video and being that Christmas is around the corner and Hanukkah and all the holidays and stuff, you know, what am I going to get? Another maybe one or two if that. So I needed to do this video right now. So if you love daily comic book content, if you love me helping you make decisions on what comic books to buy, you came to the right place. Why don't you subscribe to the channel? I'm promising you, you're going to have a lot of fun with the different types of series that I do here. Okay. So let's kick off. I'm just going to start off. There are no in like sequential order or graded order. I just kind of made a list and I took them out of the box. And we're just going to go one by one here. So here we go. There's one book I'm going to save to the end. So the first book that we're going to show you here is Marvel Spotlight uh, Volume 2. This is issue one. This is, has Captain Marvel on it. Uh, this is a Doug Monek story. Pat Brundick and Bruce Patterson art. Uh, it's Captain Marvel, Drax, Star Fox, and Mentor appearance. And there's letters from Kurt Busick and Scott McLeod on there. I don't know. I didn't care about all that stuff when I bought it. I just liked it because I thought it was a cool cover, right? And uh, I think, what is this, a, a Bronze Age book? So I thought this was pretty awesome. Really cool to have in the uh, in the collection. It's an 8.5. It's not perfect, but yeah, I like it, man. It's pretty badass. Where am I going to put these now? All right. And then I wound up getting this one uh, from Mutant Beaver Comics. Uh, they send me stuff at, from time to time. And then what I do is I, uh, I use them as giveaways. But this is a very nice cover uh, from Donnie Cates. This is a 9.8 Venom issue 31. And this is just has a legacy numbering of 196. So as always, I appreciate Mutant Beaver Comics for sending me these slabs and their comics that they do send me. Great company. If you guys are looking to save 10% off of comic book variants, you can use my uh, discount code or promo code. It's called Corner10. It's in the description box below. So yeah, really cool Venom cover there. It's a virgin variant. All right. Then I got this slab this year from my good friend, uh, Adam. Uh, he has his own YouTube uh, channel called Collecting with Dirts, and uh, he sold me this slab because I just thought it was pretty badass. It's got the nice little uh, label right here. It's a 9.8, and this is the second printing of Amazing Spider-Man issue uh, 55. So it's the Patrick Gleason cover that all these covers were booming for a little while, and uh, even though they may not be as popular right now, they're still fire, man. I really like them. So good stuff right there all right and then i just recently got this this week actually on this week's comic book haul this is a 9.8 of spawn issue 17 uh this is the first appearance of anti-spawn who later re uh, becomes redeemer spawn in issue 31 this is actually a grant morrison story and this is a great capullo cover art so it's pretty cool to see Greg Capullo on those early spawn issues it's a nice detailed cover there I love that one this one screamed out to me because uh, J. Scott Campbell is one of my favorite cover artists this was absolutely gorgeous I got this one at Comic Central got a fancy label on it this is House of X this is issue 5 um, and this, this cover actually glows in the dark, believe it or not. So I was like, oh yeah, I'll definitely pick this one up. And uh, 
that's what makes it special. It glows in the dark. And Storm looks absolutely gorgeous in here. You got the lightning behind her as well. Uh, here we get to see the certificate of authenticity in the back of the slab. Uh, it's limited to 2,500 copies. So I thought that's that was a cool book to add to the collection. I don't think I paid more than 50 bucks for that book. So not bad. All right. And then... <laughs> If you guys have followed my channel for a long time, you know my like obsession with Spawn Issue 9. And I finally landed a 9.8 copy. Uh, my shop had it on their website. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm buying this because I have about seven or eight Ray, you know raw copies of them and they're all pretty good shape but nothing's better than that 9.8 right so i want to know in the comments below is there a comic book cover that you hoard or is there a book that you're constantly looking for that 9.8 right this was it i finally got it uh am i gonna hold on to all those other covers yeah you bet your ass i am i just love the cover for some reason i think the character is cool as well obviously first appearance of of uh Angela in here and it's a Neil Gaiman story all right here's a nice little classic cover here that I picked up this year I thought was pretty cool uh, this is Spider Woman issue 20 at a 9.4. This is the first meeting between Spider Man and Spider Woman, which is pretty cool. And uh, this is the origin of Spider Woman retold. This book does have white pages in it, so this is a nice book to have in your collection. But this right here between these two guys, that's great, man. I love this. This screams uh, classic comic books for me, at least, anyway. I gotta love the corner box right there jessica drew looks awesome so great book to have in your collection all right here's another cool book uh i don't collect a lot of captain america stuff but it was there it was affordable price and this was captain america issue uh 218 Part of the reason why I did buy this was because Iron Man is on the cover. Where is he? Right here. And I am an Iron Man guy, so that's probably one of the reasons why I got this. This is a Don Glut story, Sal Pacima cover, and uh, Mike Esposito and John uh, Tartaglion arts. Iron Man appearance, Marvel Man, Quasar, Blue Streak, Vamp, Texas Twister, and Ameridroid cameos so there's a lot of characters in this comic book i do like the yellow background i like how this pops but this is a great great cover man i love this one so cool things here hey you gotta love the back dude <laughs> it's so awesome with that walkie talkie all right and then we have a really cool comic book. This is from February of 1977. I was two years old here. This is a Roy Thomas story. And this is the brief origin of Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four. It takes place in What If Spider-Man Joined the Fantastic Four. Yes, What If Issue 1 at a 9.2. I do have a raw copy of this comic book, but nowhere near a 9.2. I'd probably say it's like an 8.0 or maybe even a 7.5 or whatever it is but this is a great comic white pages on this one as well i love the original what if stories i think they're a lot of fun and uh nothing's better than that first volume so great stuff right here all right let's talk about the story about this comic book so you guys know that i am a um a firm belief like i like whatnot right and i also promote them because i am an affiliate with them and i feel like you can get good discounts on whatnot you can find great deals well here is one example that i did not get a good deal i don't think on this comic book and this is web of spider-man issue one this is a direct edition this is a nine uh, nine point four this is white pages this came out in 1985 in april okay so when i was bidding on this book it was a sudden death bid and if you're not of if you're not familiar with sudden death it, it's like there's a time limit and once that time limit runs out that's who gets the book for that price well what happens everyone waits to the last second and then like dozens of people can swipe at that last second and it jacks up the price 
Well, I was the last person that swiped and there was a dozen people that swiped and it boosted this comic up from like $55, $60 to like $105 that I paid for this book plus shipping. And I feel like I overpaid for this book. Yes, it's a great book. I have a copy, uh, a raw copy, and it's actually a newsstand. Here I have a direct. Yes, I overpaid, and I kind of regretted it at the end, but at the end of the day, at least now I have it. Do you guys have stories like that? Let me know in the comments section below. All right. Speaking of Spider-Man, I most recently got this comic book for uh, at Megacon this past year, and I'm always looking for Amazing Spider-Man slabs, and I'm looking for Amazing Spider-Man raw copies, and if I can get them at a good price, I will. My shop was actually at Megacon Comic Central, and they had this Amazing Spider-Man issue 304 from 1988, Todd McFarlane. This is a newsstand copy, and uh, I was excited to have this one because, again, I have a direct edition raw, and so to get a newsstand in this one, I was like, okay, I'll pick this up. This is a Prowler and Black Fox appearance, the David Michelini story, nothing fantastic, not a real key here, but again, it's a Todd McFarlane cover. They're always in demand, so I was excited to have this book. Hard to believe this book was a dollar, you know? All right. Here is a story of a good what not win, okay? So again, people have said in the comments below, people that push what not don't usually use what not. They're just, you know, promoters of the story or an ambassador of the program. That's not true. I use what not quite often because like I said, you can get good deals on there. And if you want to sign up for what not and get $15 off your, your first uh, purchase there. I also will have a link in the description box below. But going back to this one, this is Venom First Host Issue 4. This is from November. God, hard to believe this was from uh, 2018 already. And this is, um, I guess, Sleeper on the cover. I, I don't know if that's the first what makes this one special, but I love Mark Bagley artwork and I love symbiotes and I thought Sleeper was a pretty badass uh, character there. Um, but I paid 20 bucks for this book. 20 bucks. You cannot get a graded comic for $20. I got this this current comic book year. Like I said, this is everything that I picked up in slabs this year. And $20. I think with shipping. Like, come on, dude. So even though I didn't make out so much on that web of Spider-Man, I feel like I made out on this 9.4. If you agree, let me know in the comments below. All right, here's a cool book that I got at Comic Central this week, or this week, this year, and this was Crossover Issue 3. This was a 9.8. This is a Virgin cover, Donny Kate's story as well, and it's it, it's like a, it's Virgin sketch, whatever it is. Badass. There's nothing really significant about it. There's the back of it. But again, it's that sketch cover, and it's Todd McFarlane, so you can't turn it down. Like, everybody pretty much collects Todd McFarlane covers, you know? And I saw this there, and I'm like, okay, I'll pick this book up. Pretty, pretty cool. Nice to add it to the collection here. All right. Now, here's a cool book. This has multiple reasons why I picked this up. There's always a reason why I pick up a slab. I don't really pick one up just to pick them up, right? So this one is uh, Marvel Super Heroes Volume 2. This is issue 8. And this is the f winter special. And it's the first appearance of Squirrel Girl on here. Uh, 9.4 copy. And this is a newsstand copy, which is cool. Uh, it has first appearance of Squirrel Girl, X-Men, Iron Man, and Namor stories. Five pages of pinups by Jim Starlin. There's a lot of people attached to this comic book. But not only was it because Squirrel Girl made her appearance in here, I could give a shit about her, but the thing was, is the artwork on the cover. The person that did the artwork on this cover is Eric Larson. He is like my childhood like idol when it came to artwork. Todd McFarlane and him, they were the ones that were uh, predominantly on Spider-Man, and that's when I started really reading Spider-Man comics, and, uh, and, and I loved his art, so I thought this was really cool. I thought he did a pretty cool job at doing Iron Man here. Nice cover with uh, Wolverine, so yeah, cool stuff there. All right. Next, this is classic, man. This is a Jack Kirby and John Romita cover. So this is not the best shape comic, probably the lower grade comics that I pick up. 
Uh, but this is from 1973 and in December, and this is Captain America and Iron Man Marvel Double Feature Issue 1. Graded out of 5.5 off-white to white pages on this one. Um, it's just because of that, why I picked it up. Again, Iron Man, my second favorite Marvel character. Jack Kirby, can't go wrong with that. Just a classic cover. All right. This I picked up because I got it for like nothing. I paid 20 bucks probably for this. And this is Weird Wonder Tales issue one. This came in at a 5.5. This is a off-white to white pages. The reason why I like this is because I do like old horror comics. And uh, I don't have too many of them. So I'm going to see maybe going into 2024 if I can find more of these like off comic books, like stuff like this. But this predates Galactus. And this character on here is a planet eater. It says it right there. In Weird Wonder Tales, it says, A monster as huge as the universe itself strikes. The thing that devoured a planet. That's pretty cool, man. So I was like, it, it has a little bit of similarity of Galactus on there, right? So I was excited. I love the people like embracing each other in here. Great, great comic book way back from 73. All right. And this book was the talk of the town. I don't know. I guess it's cooled off now. But I got this, I think, in the middle of the year. And this is Omega Man issue three. We all know the story behind this. This got hot because there's word of, you know, Lobo coming to the um, DC Cinematic Universe. There's been talks about that for a long time. So when my store got this in, I'm like, do I leave this on the shelf? Because it's a 9-2. It was definitely affordable for me to pick up. This came out in 1983, and uh, yeah, first appearance of Lobo. That's all you can say about that. It's honestly not my favorite cover, and it's not like my favorite character, but it was a key that's hot, and if it ever gets hot, hey, maybe I could sell it. I don't know. All right, here's one of the cooler books I picked up for the, uh, for the year, and when I saw this, I felt like I couldn't pass this one up. This was New Teen Titans. This is issue one out of 8.0. Uh, off white to white pages on this comic book, but this is a great comic book. Uh, not even, this is just, these Teen Titans are so much better than the Titans that we're getting in the current comics. And this is a Marv Wolfman story, George Perez and Romeo um, uh, was in Tangel Art. And uh, it's just, it's just great. It's, again, George Perez, dude. He lived right here in Sanford. I didn't know if you guys know that, but he came to a, a comic shop one time and uh, that was in the mall where I live and he did a signing for a bunch of New 52 Superman comics that he did. So uh, it was cool to meet him. He was the nicest guy, uh, just so chilled and relaxed. You know, obviously we miss him now, but uh, it was cool that he lived right here in my, in my town. All right, and then we got this book that uh, was sent to me by Mutant Beaver Comics as well. Um, I think this was pretty hot maybe at the time when it came out, but now it's not. But this is the first appearance of The Abyss. Now, if you read this story from Joshua Williamson, you are aware of who The Abyss actually is, right? And Joshua Williamson did a brief story arc and it had this character. And again, I think this comic may have been hot for a hot minute, but that's about it. 9-8 White Pages came out in 2022, so it came out last year. All right. But the biggest grab that I wound up getting this year was The Amazing Spider-Man issue 299. This is a 9.6 signed by Todd McFarlane. I was able to acquire this comic book at my comic shop. I debated about it. It's the only time that I've ever seen this comic book signed, graded, and even though it's in an older slab, which I feel like my gut tells me to, you know, crack it and get it regraded i just i still hesitant on doing this stuff that's why i don't send a lot of things out or don't send anything out to cgc i if i can get slabs or good prices that's how i acquire them that's how i buy them and i like you know keeping my stuff raw but this is a book that was in my childhood memory forever i love this cover 
I didn't even know who Todd McFarlane was at the time. I just saw this guy that had these ray beams flying out of him, and he was chasing after a black-suited Spider-Man. I was like, oh my gosh, I have to buy this comic book. But it was always like high out of my price range, even when I was a kid. Like $10 for a comic, that's crazy, right? And then over the years, it's gotten more and more and more pricey. And there was a time here now where I was able to acquire this comic book, and this was my life long dream to acquire this 290 uh 298 and 300 and i have all three now but this is the only one that i have slapped so um really cool maybe one day <laughs> i'll crack it open and you know send it out there and get a new label on there because these ones look totally dated dude you know but uh so there you have it guys so hopefully you enjoyed this little you know, memory road of why I bought all these, you know, comic slabs and, you know, I don't go crazy on them. Some people I see videos, they buy this amount in just one sitting, you know, this took me an entire year, but, uh, I get them when I can and that's about it. But I love having them in my collection. I'm so curious if there's any slabs that you picked up or maybe key books that you picked up. Leave me comments in the comments section below. I love reading your guys stuff even though I don't always respond back. Uh, but I do read every single thing. And of course guys, as always, keep buying, keep collecting. But more importantly, always read those comics and make sure you support their local comic shops. Guys, thank you so much. I'll see you real soon.